Welcome to Business Conversations with your host, business strategist, Clive Ennevar. Clive is joined by expert guests as they talk business behind the scenes to give you the tools and insights to support your growth, security, and serenity as you strive for your success. Welcome to another episode of Business Conversations with Clive Ennevar. I am Clive Ennever, business strategist, and we're having a conversation with Irene Becker about transforming a personal solution to a multi-award winning platform. Irene saw friends' relationships and quality of life suffer and so began looking for a solution to help working families regain their quality relationships and life. Hello, Irene, and welcome. Hi, Clive. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Really appreciate it. That's an absolute pleasure and I'm intrigued about you grabbing the bull by the horns, as it were, to try and help your friends get their relationships and life back. How did you go about that? Well, um, I mean, as a mum of two kids myself, obviously I went through the highs and lows, um, starting with your first baby and thinking you can do it all because, I mean, this is what we've basically been program to think as our generation you can do the job and you can have the family you can run the house and because you're just a superwoman but eventually you realize that without much sleep no one can be a superwoman you just turn into mumzilla eventually uh, which is not healthy for any relationship and uh, not good for your job and your confidence either so um um When we obviously planned our own family, uh, we had the conversation early on and it was pretty clear that I'm not willing to give up my career either and I'm not going part-time or give up my job. So we obviously went back to the solution to have the help because we didn't have family support here. So we recruited our first au pair when my husband stayed at home, who is, like as you can imagine, a trailblazer staying at home for half a year. And uh, we had our first au pair staying with us for half a year which was, to be honest, a godsend because um, three weeks into paternity leave, uh, my husband, who works crazy hours usually, tasted freedom or tasted blood of freedom and went surfing and skateboarding on the weekend and broke his shoulder twice. Uh, And there we were three weeks before um, moving home, our first home, packing boxes with my au pair after hours, after work, and there I heard myself say, you are the most important person in my life right now. And that was, I was saying that to my OP and my husband, like, excuse me, love, what's that? I'm like, sorry, that's just how I feel <laughs> at the moment. Um, and that was kind of a little light bulb to me that we are always going to have au pairs because you just have to have a backup plan and you have to have as much support as you can. If you have your parents, fabulous, right? If you can... Have anyone helping you out? If obviously the kids are sick and they can't go to school or childcare, you have to have a backup plan. And if you don't have, your whole world crumbles. And if you fall sick, the world crumbles three times over because no one's going to do the washing, no one cooks dinner, no one plans the family's logistics, and no one brings in money. So it is really critical. And it became the third baby of mine, which just wouldn't let me go. So that was uh, how that uh, personal solution came to turn into something else pretty much i'm intrigued to hear you say that there's all these jobs to do around the house i thought it was only my house that had all those jobs no everyone else too yes (laughs) (laughs) now before we go any further irene i have to ask you because you have one of the most interesting accents that i've ran across and i've i've heard many where on earth did you get that accent and what is it? Well, I've got a couple of options to answer you, Clive, depending on who I speak to. Sometimes I say Bentley East, can't you tell it? And uh, another one uh, is probably eBay where people chuckle and it takes them a moment to grasp. Uh, but the real story is um, I've lived in multiple countries. Um, I was born as a German uh, in Central Asia, just west of China. Um, if you can kind of like, you know, just one country down from Borat's country. Um, and uh, when I was 11, we moved to Germany, so repatriated, so to speak, going home after, um, I don't know, four generations of living in Russia um, and became the Russians. 
So because obviously culturally and the language and everything, my parents are very much Russian. Uh, and after graduating university, I wanted to go far, far away. And uh, I came to Australia, met a really handsome um, Indian gentleman. And uh, we decided to settle here. And now we've got uh, two Aussie kids in the mix. So that's the answer to my very complicated, confusing accent. And depending on situation and, you know, um, seriousness of the conversation I have, I tend to pull out the German or the Russian accent a bit more just to, you know, emphasize the importance. (laughs) It's interesting you say you wanted to go far, far away. There's not much much further away from Germany or Russia than uh, Australia. But I love it. I wouldn't, uh, I would do it all over again. So what age did you say when you, when you moved away from, uh, to Australia, what, what age were you then? Uh, so 2008, I think I was 27 when I moved here eventually. So my hubby and I met in 2008 and we got married here in 2010 I also managed to miss my own wedding at that time. I think there was a a volcano in Iceland and I just reached the airport and they just closed the borders and I was the typical bridezilla crying at the airport. (laughs) 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 But no one would fly. Not even Angela Merkel um, could fly. So she had to go to the um, Polish president's funeral by car. So I kind of, you know, I respected the fact that, you know, I might not be able to travel either. And um, I did offer my husband to, you know, find if he finds someone else till Saturday, he could marry her. But he did listen, as uh, husbands usually tend to do. So he was <laughs> with me. We ended up marrying one month later. And oh, was it. So, um, I finished my university and then uh, moved to Australia. So 2011, I ended up here then. What sort of things did you notice uh, about the culture and lifestyle in general uh, of Australia compared to where you'd come from? Well, I think Australians um, generally have this lovely attitude that you live, um, you work to live, and it's very important to live a long life, a healthy life, social interactions are critical, and um, I I found it fascinating. I I met so many ladies or people in general who were over 90, close to 100, who was still thriving and just like so fit mentally and physically. I met a lady in Tasmania who was 99 and driving her car and I would, I couldn't stop um, like being amazed because um, when we asked her what her secret was, she would say, Oh, you know what? Um, You never, you have a cherry every lunch and you never reject an invitation to party. And in fact, she would come to all cocktail parties during our holiday And she would be giving tips to the 84-year-olds on how to pass driving tests because she's done it 15, 14 times over. Uh, Amazing. I found it extremely fascinating. I've never seen this in Germany. And um, this was the kind of lifestyle I wanted to have. Yeah, we're interesting folk, we Aussies. We come up with some some, uh, amazing ways of achieving things. I'd like to think I'm one of you already. (laughs) Well, you've certainly come up with a way of achieving something because you took that personal event of needing help with the the kiddies and the house and you've actually turned it into a business and you're thriving as a result of that. Tell us about you coming up with the idea that this could be a business and then how that turned into this should be a business and then how it turned into this is a business. No, that, that's a very interesting. I mean, it was a journey of a few years, to be honest. Obviously, when we had our first au pair, I was at home and I could interview and screen everyone and you're kind of in the zone and you can focus on it. But I realized as soon as I went back to work and then I was trying to interview au pairs for, my, um, for myself, I realized that you're kind of doing it in between things, right? You do it while you're chucking in a lot of washing or trying to cook dinner or make sure your, your children don't kill themselves and um, trying to answer some uh, work emails, etc. So by the end of the call, you mostly don't even remember who you talked to and what you've asked them. So you tend to make mistakes, right, in the recruitment process. And um, I, I obviously burnt myself a couple of times, not choosing the right person, which hurts even more. Anyone who ever recruited anyone knows a bad choice is worse than not having anyone at all. Um, 
So I had to find a solution for myself and systemize that process because I still needed to go to work and I wanted to get some sleep and uh, still be a good mom. Um, so in the process of systemizing the whole thing, um, it kind of turned into, well, we have a system, let's make it available to everybody because at the same time, a lot of my friends and families were coming to me and say, can you explain what is an OPA? How does it work? What's the process? What do I need to think of? And all these questions kind of combined into a system. So we ended up just putting it online just as a trial. So I briefed an agency, say, hey, can you can you put this, uh, put some mock-ups in place? I worked in the digital space. I was running an e-commerce store for my job. So um, it ended up being online and we had lots of feedback and people registering. And in the process, we kind of, it turned into, oh, I think we, we, we just, we have a business. Um, and um, it got, we got a lot of recognition in the process. So we got picked up um, as um, Australia's top 50 um, small businesses, uh, which was fantastic. And I got a couple of um, other awards. We were finalists in digital award for um, Australia's cool company awards. So apparently we were cool as well. And um, um, so a lot of families started coming to us and saying we really need help. And uh, it turned into a twofold product you know our service so once we have a platform which kind of matching place so you can say like dating for families and all pairs um and um the other services then the agency where the families don't even have time to think uh, about the whole process that are like i'll tell you what i need can you please just find me the right person um yeah and all of a sudden we have a business we're busy we have a team of five working on it and um, it's fabulous so we are adding more and more people as we go and all the while um, saving people from themselves or their lack of life. Yes, exactly. So it's all about uh, quality of life, right, which um, we often, often don't even realise how little we have of it because we're too busy working and mostly both partners are working. I mean, if you're single, then you're working anyways. And uh, we just um, rush to work, we come home, uh, we have dinner, we get the kids to bed and then the day's over and that over and over again. You don't realize how little time you end up spending with each other and how little quality time you have, whether it be as a family or even partners, right? Because I don't know, when was the last time if we asked families, when was your last day? And they're just like, mm, I don't know, 2017, something like that. So trying to work on both family quality life for families and also relationships. And, of course, none of that fits very um, well with the advice from our 99-year-old. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> How can we expect to live a long life if we drive ourselves into the ground and, and we don't have any of that work-life balance and we certainly don't have sherry for lunch? I mean, this is just not right, is it? Absolutely. It's not the Aussie way to live, isn't it? <laughs> Helping people with their work-life balance. A lot of people that uh, I hear from about work-life balance seem to have the idea that it's 50-50. Do you find that work-life balance is 50-50 or is it something else? Oh, it's really hard to say. I mean, my husband tends to say it's more work-life integration rather than balance. Like, you know, if you take a couple of hours to go visit the dentist, well, you work for it the rest of the night for four hours or so. Um, I think it's um, you. I think work-life balance. I don't know. I don't really see much of it. It's more about you know prioritizing things as you go. Sometimes it's you focus more on the family. Sometimes you focus more on work, depending on what takes priority. But it's always making an effort to actually ensure um, you spend time with your family. You spend time with the people who care care about you most, right? Because especially kids, while they're little, they're interested in what you have to say, and they're interested to share their world with you. Um, in 15 years, um, they're not interested spending time with you, and you will realize it later. That's when you will have time, and they'll be like, "Yeah, sorry, got my own stuff." So it's really important to um, you know realizing what 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 your values are. And, you know, making sure you make time to live those values. And it starts with quality. And if you can add quantity, that's a bonus. Agree. Yes, 100%. You, your friends were asking you, you know, what's this about au pairs? What are au pairs, et cetera? Mm -hmm. What are au pairs, Irene? Well, au pairs are young people, um, usually age 18 to 30, um, who come from overseas, um, mostly, I mean, they're mostly young people after graduating or 
university and jobs. So um, they want to go overseas um, to explore other country, other cultures, new languages, improve their language skills. And most often they want to explore themselves. They want to see what they're made of. It's their path to independence and to really, you know, um, defining themselves. Um, and um, as au pairs, they do so by living with a family. So, for example, they live with a family in Australia. Um, they learn their lifestyle. So they get to explore the Aussie lifestyle as Aussies live it with the barbecues and, you know, going to the beach and uh, playing cricket on the weekend, etc. And they improve their English while doing so. And then they go travel in between. Do they become almost uh, another family member? Oh, absolutely. That's what au pairing is all about. It's a cultural exchange. They are part of the family, so they're basically either big brother or big sister, or I call them a partner in crime for the parents, um, especially moms, because they take a huge chunk of the mental load um, of the parents. So they uh, know while you're at work, they can chuck in a load of washing, they can stack un- unstack the dishwasher, they can look after the kids' toys, they can make sure they actually do their homework and, uh, you know, give them a snack in the afternoon and still do a run to the park and, you know, do all the crazy stuff that the kids have energy for. Us old adults don't have, just don't have it anymore. There's many of us out here in the big bad world. We're tired, we're stressed, work's getting to us, family life seems to be a, a burden rather than a joy. What sort of things do you notice about the people you help through 99 Peers, What changes do you see in them? It was interesting you asked that because I interviewed a family, um, one of our customers lately, and um, her girls. So she's a single parent. She works um, at one of the big banks. And um, I asked her girls, what do you think is the best part of having your pairs? And they said, mom is not so stressed anymore. She's actually nice now. So if the kids say say, you know it is serious. But obviously talking to a lot of parents, um, one of our customers says she actually uh, feels extremely relaxed. She's got three kids and one of the kids has special needs. So she needs to drive her child to school one hour away and obviously has to go back and she also has a baby. And um, she called her baby the capsule baby because uh, the baby basically never got out of the car because she was busy driving and doing all the family logistics. Once she had an au pair um, through us, um, she said the au pair is looking after the baby at home. The baby is much happier, screaming and crying less because obviously it needs to move and interact. And her kids are happier overall. She feels she can sleep much better at night because her husband is fearful and she knows someone's in the house in case something happens to the kids and the other ones are still looked after. So overall, it takes a lot of tension and pressure out of a family and potentially relationships. And it gives um, the parents a lot more space to be the parents they want to be. And uh, again, not um, bringing the worst of you home because usually at work, we are our best, right? Because we need to be uh, on our best behavior. But at home, um, we then, once we know we actually don't have anything else to stress about, we can be the parents we want to be. We can read books to our kids. We can enjoy our children. We can listen to them and really be in the moment. So we can get that time back to have time to work on that life and to work on that work-life balance. Yeah, and maybe you just reach home, pack the kids and go to the beach. As long as we put our uh, sunscreen on, we can go to the beach. Always sunscreen. Always got to think about that because years ago when I was a kid, there was no such thing. Or if there was, we didn't hear about it. So (laughs) we've got to be right on it. What's the more to be (laughs) there? Irene, you've actually taken a a very big step uh, to start a business, number one, and number two, to keep it running and Even more, you actually managed to win awards because of the way your business has operated. There's quite possibly a lot of people out there, a lot of mums even, who have ideas that maybe they'd like to run a business. Maybe this is an idea that I could turn into a business. What advice would you give to people like that? I think business, um, I, I saw a lot of people refer to it and I think it's correct. Business is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So it will take much, much longer than you originally think it will take to build something up. 
Um, you need to um, grow patience, which is absolutely not my strongest suit. I'm still waiting for my patience to arrive. And um, I think it needs to be something, um, again, uh, passion is such an overused word, but it needs to be something that is so close to your heart because it will be really difficult. It will be really painful. There'll be a lot of things and decisions you need to make that are hard and heartbreaking and a lot of risks to take. And there will be things that you absolutely don't enjoy doing in the business. So it needs to be something that is actually really close to your heart because there will be more tough days in the beginning than there will be good days. And you need to have something underlying to keep you going, to make you want to keep going. But um, if this is what you want to do and that is important to you and it's something bigger than just, I want to start a business, um, then you will definitely succeed. I mean, for us, it, it, that's exactly what keeps us going. For me, it was more about seeing my fellow moms and parents um, not break down, uh, break down physically, emotionally, and uh, lose their jobs and maybe lose their relationships, which again brings a family into a completely different um, dimension of stress and trauma. Um, it's more about making sure all my friends are happy and they're looked after and um, now it um, grew bigger to make sure our com community is sustained and well looked after. Um, and also for fellow moms, I am a feminist, I have to say, very proud of it. Um, it's also making sure that moms can continue working and um, con uh, remain financially independent. So um, if they have the support they need, they then don't have to make the choices of do I save money on childcare or do I have to keep my job? Because often the the justification is it's not it, it's not worthwhile continue working beyond day three for me because you know all the money is taken by childcare. But this is very short term thinking. For me, it's important. You need to think beyond. You need to think towards your retirement because your super will be less than half of your partner at best, right? And uh, because you've spent your best best years not even looking after kids. You've spent your best years doing the washing and doing runs and, you know, going shopping uh, for groceries and doing all the things that actually don't pay you and don't recognize your skill set. So for me, for, for us as a business, is now bigger than the individual drive to have a business. It's more making sure we support our immediate community, but also we support the, um, the economy by bringing more women into workforce, which will be a huge benefit for Australia overall. Very good point you make, Irene. But along the way, there were probably a few failures that jumped up and uh, surprised you perhaps, or, or at least made you uncomfortable. What sort of failures or challenges presented themselves to you and and how did you overcome them? I think um, I wouldn't say anything is a failure. I think it's more, um, I don't know, bumpy milestones that we had to overcome or learnings. Um, I mean, we had a couple of partnerships where we spent a lot of time and resources building, but then eventually they did turn out because um, uh, we didn't check in early on what their values are, what their true values are. And all of a sudden uh, we said, I'm sorry, this is not where we want to be. We don't want to cut on quality just to make sure we meet the price point. Um, so obviously we had to curl them eventually and said, I'm sorry, we are better apart. Um, that was a bit painful um, because obviously we spend a lot of resources and uh, we've um, um, a lot of money in the process and a lot of our time. Um, into this, but eventually we said no. We are not not willing to just to to um, put our name and brand uh, on the line um, and risking uh, potentially um, harming some people or harming some families in the process. So there was a big learning, and obviously we put more way more steps in place now to make sure we choose the right partners to work with. Um, another learning is probably the biggest one, which um, um, in the beginning when you don't have any money. Uh, but you still want to have quality, um, obviously time and resources, the other <laughs> um, part of the project. Um, we spent uh, thousands of hours um, on our platform, for example, testing everything because obviously we chose um, quite a, let's say, affordable agency to work with uh, overseas. And uh, it was an extremely painful. So it was blood, sweat and tears, so probably less blood, but a lot of tears and a lot of sweat in the process. So for me, I think um, the learning, again, I'm not sure if I wouldn't have done it again the same way, but I think the learning is 
make sure you choose really, really strong partners because if they are not much better at what you are in their area of expertise, you will outgrow them very quickly and it will very quickly turn into a very frustrating relationship. Um, so I've learned now to know what my weaknesses are and limitations are and uh, not focus on those for me to improve. I focus on finding the people who will fill my limitations and fill my weakness spot. So I make sure that everyone in the other roles that we have in the business is much, much better in that area than I am. And um, I expect them to challenge me and to tell me why or why we should not be doing things. So yeah, a lot of learnings. I think it's it's a big journey also to learn about yourself as, as a manager or a leader because you also have a team to lead and motivate. And often I realize um, I'm being a pretty crappy boss and um, I have to turn around and make good again on my people, right? And But that's a journey. So, um, yeah, a lot of learnings, I would say. But, again, it's a marathon that we keep learning. And so far, all our team members are still on board. So I haven't managed to piss off anyone. Apologies for my French uh, too much. They still love it, but I think um, the one thing that we've done right is everyone we bring on board is actually um, in it for the mission and the vision that we are there. So they want to help mothers first and foremost um, to stay in the job and pursue their careers and be good moms and look after their families. And uh, most of them are mothers themselves. Um, Some of them escaped domestic violence. So they are... 100% 100% passionate and they can probably get through my bad days um, of, you know, being uh, short, um, a bit short and a bit impatient and pushing people a bit too hard. But, um, yeah, so it's a big learning overall. Very good advice, I think, Irene. <laughs> Where do you see your business in the coming years? Do you think it will change? Oh, I think business is all about change. It's always evolving. I think you start with one thing and then you just have to, um, again, follow uh, the demand of the market. Um, you need to learn and evolve because if you get stuck on one thing, you might have an idea of what works, but the market will tell you very quickly what what works and what doesn't. So um, I think um, we obviously we put a platform online first, thinking that every, you know every parent can recruit themselves once they have the tools. But then we quickly learned that some families simply don't have the headspace to do so. So we added the agency service on top, and then we had families approaching us and saying, "Could you actually help us with elderly care instead as au pairs?" So we started putting feelers in the market and asked au pairs if they have any experience in the aged care because at the end of the day it's still a cultural exchange, right? You live with the family, you, you, you experience the culture, um, you help them out. Um, and uh, so we had a few placements in aged care. So obviously it's more companionship. So you go for a walk with the elderly, um, you help them doing the shopping. Um, again, depending on how um, handicapped they are, how much help they need, it might uh, be help with toileting and shower, et cetera, et cetera. So we are now expanding into aged care as well with our business and we will be looking to expand into NDIS as well, so busy disability care. So I can see in a couple of years that we will be a provider of in-home care, about, again, flexible in-home care, uh, whether it be in pair space or maybe a bit broader, I can't tell. Uh, we follow the market. Again, it is very much in line Um with our vision to help um, mothers because as mothers or women in general, um, they usually tend to do a couple of cycles of care. So as young moms, they care for their children, then they care for their parents, right? Then they care for their children's children and then they care for their partners. And those are all the years that they are busy caring, that they are not actually doing work for, you know, for themselves to pay into their super or also they're out of the workforce. Noble goals. Uh, I applaud you for those and and uh, encourage you. But as we approach the end of our conversation, Irene, what is the best tip you have received from a business conversation? I think it's trust your gut. So often um, as a business owner, you have to make decisions where you don't have all the facts together. Often you don't have the time to get all the facts together. And sometimes if you feel something's not quite right, just don't do it. 
right? Just keep on gathering more information. If you feel, let's just do it, this is a great opportunity, then you should just go ahead and do it. Obviously, get your legal advice and get your uh, insurance in order and then go ahead and do it because some opportunities just don't come again. And um, I think the other advice is gather the right people around you. You will need a lot of support and it can be a lonely place. So have a lot of support that way. Excellent pieces of advice, I think. Most importantly, Irene, how can our listeners connect with you to start their own business conversation? Well, first of all, you should go to Clive because he's an amazing uh, business um, strategist, I heard, (laughs) from many people. Uh, But if you would like to get in touch with us, obviously um, head to 99ops.com if you're looking for an au pair yourself. Um, or um, send me an email on my hello at 99opairs.com. Would love to have a chat. And 99opairs is two nines, digit nines, and opairs is spelled A-U-P-A-I-R-S. So it's 99opairs.com. Right. Irene, this has been an exciting and delightful conversation, not the least being... Your heritage. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit uh, colourful. <laughs> no, absolutely amazing that uh, we have such um, diversity uh, in we Aussies because I can call you an Aussie, can't I? Yes, I am Aussie indeed. <laughs> Peter Dutton signed my uh, citizenship certificate. We are based- oh, there you go. you're a fully fledged Aussie you've even got a piece of paper to prove it I don't have one they just call me one (laughs) you're still welcome (laughs) (laughs) no it's an absolute pleasure Clive I I, I think for me this is Australia like everyone feels welcome in Australia because everybody knows how it is to be a foreigner how to arrive in a country where you don't know anybody and uh, all our friends, we are basically each other's orphans. Every Christmas, we um, our group of, you know, we have 15, 20 friends and we probably have 10 to 12 nationalities in there, plus the Australian. Um, that's usually included. And we have a um, secret of, you know, two culture clubs where um, each couple needs to bring two cultures, whether it's one person or the other. So, um, and for me, this is Australia. This is why I love this culture so much. Everyone is super helpful, um, super um, welcoming. And, um, yeah, and it's all about um, banding together, helping each other out, um, looking after each other. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. That's excellent. Uh, Irene, this has been a delightful conversation. And I wish you good luck with those objectives that you have for the future. And... Let's hope we get to talk again very, very soon. Thank you so much, Clive. Thank you so much for inviting me. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of Business Conversations with Clive Enova. Make sure you subscribe to future episodes via your favourite podcast app and you can find more business resources at cliveenova.com.au. 